Well, my friends, King Talib is back in action. You may recall previously that he went and zeroed 30 plus cities in our kingdom, so we zeroed him. Well, now he's retrained his troops and gearing up for who the heck knows what. Stick around. We'll talk about our defensive preparations and what he might go and do. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chiskool Gaming, and today we're going to be preparing our farm. That's right, our farm account for a likely invasion from King to leave. If you like Rise of Kingdoms guides that help you get value and smash your enemies, consider smashing that subscribe button for daily Rise of Kingdoms videos. We're a sponsored content creator, and King Talib, man, he just doesn't give up. He's retrained his troops from 53 million power back up to 70 and a half million power. He's now got enough marches to swarm a city, and I'll be honest, I'm a little bit concerned about my city in KVK because, look, we're going to be switching between alliances. There's a chance that my city will be off territory and swarmable. So we're going to go in in this video and really amp up the defense for my city, both leveraging all the new equipment that we have and powering up a new commander to be the primary. Now, King Talib has over 610,000 kills, more than entire alliances all by himself, which is kind of remarkable, although he is certainly a warrior to be uh, taken very seriously. In KVK Season 3, he was in our kingdom and fought really well for the kingdom. In KVK Season 4, he took a little bit more of a back seat, and after that, he just sort of went completely rogue. Um, not the thing that I wanted or would have preferred. Tried to avoid that many times over. Check out my card up in the top if you want to see any number of videos where we talk about all of the craziness that unfolded with King Talib. Now, my suspicion is that there will be action, and our allies nearby need to be prepared along with us. The good news is that although we're in KVK, uh, which could make for really awkward timing, we do have three other kingdoms that will be pretty eager to fire off the king skill in prison on King Talib, which is pretty savage. So we'll see if or what he ends up doing. But in preparation for the possibility that my city could be caught off territory and uh, get swarmed down, you know, there's a couple things I'm going to do before that potential uh, event could happen. And by the way, the kill event for this mightiest governor is just around the corner. When King Talib did his training, he did so in the final seconds of the troop training portion using, I believe, almost entirely 50k extenders to completely thwart our arranged Mightiest Governor configuration leading into Kingsland. Oh well. Uh, Sterling's going to have a little bit of work, as will Honey Badger. I probably will end up being short 10 sculptures out of the deal. I was supposed to get third, and my final outcome will likely be fourth which is really like not that big of a deal for me. Uh, but for the other folks that are also getting bumped down, you know, look, it's kind of a bummer. So what are we doing to prepare our city? My defense right now is really quite exceptional. We've got Sun Tzu and Esong, and for most players, this is really quite good and good enough. The challenge, however, is that I've seen King Talib zero cities, and he knows not to just stand in the frontal cone of the area of effect damage. In fact, what King Talib will do is he'll send a tank march in first, and that's going to take the majority of the damage, and he's going to put all his other marches back behind where the AoE is happening so that it's not hit. So my Esong will do some good work, but my Sun Tzu's AoE will be completely nullified and really not all that valuable. Now, as you know from testing we've done in previous videos, card up in the top, if you want to defend your city, Sun Tzu is a great choice, but it doesn't take many skills onto a Charles Martel to outperform it. So what I'm going to do in this video is go put enough stars onto my Charles Martel to make him the primary commander for defending my city. That's going to be really nice because I can can't just transition over a lot of the gear that I had on my Sun Tzu already that is infantry special talented right over to my Charles Martel. And honestly, there's some gear that we're going to go craft just to increase this sort of tankiness and survivability of our city so that in a worst case, at least we inflict some good damage on King Talib as he zeroes our city for kill event points. And no, you know, I guess I could use a three-day shield, but, you know, I'm, I'm not going to. 
in all likelihood, if King Talib is going to strike, it might be during this kill event. He is logical. I mean, like, he wants points. Kill event seems like a pretty good time. It's also entirely possible he strikes when we're in combat with an opposing kingdom. People are switching between alliances. My own farm included could be kicked out of an alliance in short notice and suddenly off territory, which is a little awkward. So let's get to the investing as I was describing here, and let's work on our Charles Martel. I've got the experienced tomes. He's a 5512 commander, which is pretty solid for now. Let's start to crank him up, shall we? We'll take him up to level 40, power in those stars, and I like the new save materials formula button that you can press. You can really jam on the experience a number of times, and it's just gonna keep loading in those stars, which is nice. We're going to make our way all the way to six stars. We really only have enough stars to take one commander. I do find myself kicking myself a little bit that I didn't unlock YSS on this account. I figured, you know, like, just cool. It's a farm. Like, you don't need, you don't need every commander on your farm. But if I had YSS, I probably would use every single sculpture I have on that commander and nearly expertise him, which, like, oh, well. Oh, well, Charles Martel is going to be a great commander to have all around, no matter how you slice it, even if I end up not using him to defend my city and later on he gets replaced. He's still quite exceptional for a number of activities in the game. Boom, there we go. So now I can put more experience onto Martel, and really the only reason to put more experience onto a garrison commander for your city is just to get the talent points. It doesn't affect the number of troops that you ultimately have or can bring. Let's start with the highest denominations of experienced tomes, and we'll work our way down. We do have quite a few of these, and I am quite happy with how many levels I've gotten just off of those. So there we go, level 50. Now we're going to star him up even more, saving that material formula. And we're going to take him all the way to level 60, just using experienced tomes. Uh, feel pretty good that I've been running around the Lost Kingdom, and really you should do this as well. Hitting the Barbarians to get boatloads of experience, uh, to get boatloads of gems as well. That, I feel, has been a great boon for this account, using all of those action point potions that we have. And honestly, like, I could probably make a push for top 20 or, uh, yeah, top 20 in honor in KVK with my farm, but I don't know. feels like kind of a waste. Like, I don't really need it on my farm. I don't really need the city skin. That doesn't really make sense to do. But funny that I could go and do that. So we're going to crank these out. And you can see it's using up a lot of stars. It's going to use up the majority of the stars that we have. I feel like that used a lot of stars. Didn't give me a lot of experience. Each time we do this, it's going to give me less than a percent of experience unless it crits. In which case, it'll be about 2% almost of experience toward the next level. We're almost there now. I like to do kind of two at a time. I feel like you can mash the button, but it doesn't always give you as much experience maybe as it should. I don't know. Maybe I'm just paranoid there. So as we close the gap here toward six stars, we did a lot of testing in the past with these commanders and builds to use. We've got a build already lined up that we're going to copy um, sort of from our Sun Tzu. We're going to move it over to our Charles Martel. He's got the defense tree, which is really exceptional for city defense, and we're definitely going to use that. Now, I'm, of course, concerned more about a swarm against my city than a rally. And the reason that that is the case is that it feels pretty unlikely that there's enough people in the kingdom. Let's see. How many can I do? Only two. If there's enough people in the kingdom that would, like, want to zero my farm, that that would be a thing that they do with a rally. So it's a swarm I need to worry about, and we're going to pick talents that are exactly geared for that situation. So here we go. We're going to fire up that experience. It is a non-trivial amount of experience, but we have the tomes, which feels good. to so just crank this commander straight up all the way to level 60. Now we've got a lot of talent points that we can go apply. I'm going to do that now. Know Thy Enemy is incredible for city defense if you're going to get swarmed. The 9% damage reduction is exceptional. We're going to take less skill damage as well by getting impregnable. Work on our rage generation by getting nowhere to turn. Now, I think it's highly likely that he is going to be swarming me with cavalry. So I will want to go and pick up Iron Spear. 
Now from there, I've got a lot of choices. I do want to reduce all damage taken. So I'm going to snap those off. I also want to reduce skill damage taken and increase my counter attack, which seems very, very solid. I don't want, I definitely do not want to be healing to put sort of more troops available for him to then kill and overflow my hospital. Healing doesn't really do what I need here. I do like the idea of getting a really solid boost when I am below 50% strength because the reality is, yeah, if my city is getting swarmed down, that is going to happen. So I like the idea of putting a few points over here and picking that up. I only have eight points left. With that, I am going to drop points into balance, reducing all damage taken and also reducing the damage ideal, but a favorable trade in my opinion. And the final points I can either put into normal attack, which is not terribly exciting for me. I could put them into some of these talent points over here, which give, yeah, okay, like, you know, half a percent of stats. If I am going to go in on half a percent of stats, which I might do, like, I'd, I think I'd rather have the stats than the normal attack, weirdly enough, because my normal attacks are only hitting one target. I'm going to be dealing, presumably, with five marches trying to swarm this city. Uh, if that is something I'm concerned about, I do kind of feel like the points over here would be the way to go. Uh, I'll snap those off now. Look, when you're defending your city, you are going to have four different troop types there. So I could have gone in on strong of body, but that only improves infantry. And I do have a fair amount of infantry, but the um, half a percent of stats, the four troop types, is pretty solid over here. For four points, that's really good. I would have had to put two points into infantry over here and then two points over here. This is all in the realm of micro-optimizations. Let's get them on the wall, shall we? Let's get our Charles Martel on the wall, looking really fresh here. Bada boom. Beautiful. The final touch now for defending our city is going to be moving the equipment over to our Charles Martel. So we're going to take that Abyssal Visage, which has a monster amount of stats. Put that on him. We're going to grab the Infantry Breastplate, move that over. We're going to take the Staff of the Lost. And although this now benefits more archers, um, really, since I've got all the different troop types in my city, I'm less concerned about, uh, you know, having a weapon that is infantry focused and more concerned about just the volume of stats. Speaking of which, we're going to use the Windswept set, which is going to give us 2% troop attack, and that's to all troop types, deceptively good for defending your city. So now that we've done that, we can go in and maybe craft a little bit of gear here that will help us out. We've got a pretty solid amount of stats on the infantry breastplate with the infantry defense of 5.5% and cavalry health of 3%. However, however, if I go in and just do a little bit of crafting over here in the blacksmith, we could make a Quinn's Soul. That is going to work out a lot better for me, I think, in terms of total volume of stats. And, ooh, Golden Age. It would be weird to pick infantry as the special talent on Golden Age if I actually make this thing right now, which I might do. But it is the Charles Martel defending my city. Let's start with the Quinn Soul. We're going to fire this up real quick. And yeah, it's going to use a bunch of our material choice chests. We're going to hit Forge. No special talent. But because we've not done a lot of forging on this account, I mean, we are going to get a lot of goodies here. A lot of goodies. Okay. We claim all those. Let's get that Quinn Soul equipped. Here we go. Swap this out. Bada boom. And we can go back onto our Sun Tzu and put that other infantry breastplate on. Lovely. In terms of other gear that we could make now for Charles Martel, I'm pretty happy with the blue pants. I suppose we could upgrade to an epic pair of pants. I suppose we could do that. We also could look to accessorize a little bit. Do I have any accessories? Apparently, I don't have enough materials to make a lucky coin because we do have a lucky coin pattern. All right, I think for now, that about covers my preparations for the possibility of a swarm. There's a few more things we could go and try to special talent or go spend a bunch of gold to go and craft. We also have 
540 plus gold keys we need to go and open, which could put another skill or two on a Charles Martel, which would certainly add a lot of value. We're going to open up these gold keys in an upcoming live stream. So stick around for that. Consider subscribing. And heck, if you want to see a massive gold key opening, I'll put a card up in the top where you can go and check that out or any of the other videos where we uh, went and tangoed with Talib. Those will be in the information section as well. Throw a like on the video if you enjoyed this. And until next time, you have fun smashing the kingdom.